everybody. Welcome to another episode of Making Dough Restaurant Show. Every week we come to you, uh, bring you a quick episode and a little nugget that hopefully you can put into practice to grow your restaurant sales. If this is our first time, my name is Hango. My husband and I, we own two restaurants in the San Antonio area, and we've been able to triple our sales in the last five years. Again, on, on this show, I share with you what's working, what's not working, what we're doing and all that, again, in hopes that it helps you grow your sales. So today uh, we're going through this series uh, that I'm calling 52 Ways to Grow Your Restaurant Sales. And uh, let's get to it. Uh, where is the present? Fantastic. So let's get to it. I wanted to just kind of uh, dive in and tell you um, what is going on. So you can download this guide that I have for you. I'm calling it a year's worth of marketing ideas to grow your restaurant sales or 52 ideas. You can download it from our website at www.makingdoshow.com. It is free. And again, it go, goes over 52 ideas. Why 52? Because a year has 52 weeks. And if you implement one thing every week, then, uh, we'll have a good bit of harvest at the end of the year, which is the plan. So, uh, we can connect on podcast, your favorite podcast app, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, all of that jazz. I'm also on YouTube, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. You can search for Making Dough Show. Um, I hope that you subscribe so we can stay in touch. Let's connect, say hello, uh, let's get to meet. So again, the philosophy we, I have here uh, with our restaurant as I run the marketing for our restaurants um, and with making dough show is that the view here is that it's not like one thing you do. And this is, this is what people sell you. It's not like one thing you're going to do that is going to grow your sales 20%. It's going to be a collective of uh, many ideas that you put together, things you do again, diligently sowing seeds daily and weekly that gradually will open, um, grow your sales. And you get to a level, you look back, it's like, wow, I can't believe that we were able to double our sales in two years which is very intense, I tell you from experience, but it's just, you gotta do that, you gotta grow your sales. So today we're gonna talk about something that you may or may have not considered um, that is going to affect you growing your sales, and that is to get involved in the local business community in your town, in your city where you live. I repeat that a lot of times, the success of your restaurant relies on who lives in the three to five mile radius of your restaurant. And you can get to know those people. Those people go to grocery stores. Those people go to schools. I mean, send their kids to those schools. They go to churches. They do business in your neighborhood. And so today we're going to talk about how joining a local business networking group can help you in growing your restaurant sales. I've attended from the beginning uh, of our restaurant when we started in 2014. Uh, we, I read a book, was called Growing Pizza by Michael Shepard. It's a fantastic book. Um, and he shared there, you should join a local chamber of commerce. You should uh, do all that that I'm telling you today. And so we we're like, you know what? We're just going to do it. And we did. So uh, this photo down here uh, and the where I'm sitting around thing, this is at a meet coffee or something like that, coffee at our local chamber of, uh, of commerce. Uh, this gentleman uh, is from our local bank, you know, so you have people from banks, you have from people from insurance companies, you have uh, other brick and mortar businesses, all of them gather at, you know, local ch chamber of commerce, as well as local network business groups that you can find and attend their weekly meetings and give referrals and receive referrals. This uh, top one, I'm here. I wanted to share with you, this is a small uh, networking group I used to attend. And as you see, initially it wasn't hosted at our restaurant. It was being at some other restaurant that I used to go to, uh, to attend after a year of attending, they wanted to move. They asked where they should move and they suggested themselves, Hey, maybe we should move to Matangas, which is our restaurant. So that's what they did. So they met at our restaurant, which was fantastic because we're always pro getting exposure. This was uh, a smaller gathering. Uh, we got to a level that we had like 60 people every Thursday at 8.30 a.m. meeting at our restaurant, which was fantastic. So this is a photo uh, with my husband at that where we won the Small Business of the Year Award for our contribution to our community. We won that award two consecutive years, which is a great honor. And again, one of the main reasons is that we were involved in our business community, which I'm going to share with you how you can as well do that and take advantage of it. 
So I'm going to go over some of the reasons. Initially, I said, yes, it is important to use that to grow your restaurant sales. But I wanted to tell you, as always, it's not always about our sales as much as it is a, a lot about sales because that matters. So let's go back. I want to talk about having a support of a business community and how critical that is. Let's talk about it. So one of the things that happens is that we have a Facebook group in a couple of them, two to three or four of them. The biggest one has over 20,000 people in that local Facebook group. These are people who live here in three to five mile radius of our restaurant. And I try to be there as much as I can, but I'm not always in there active or trying to interact or read what's going on in, in town. One of the greatest uh, benefits of me attending these local business networking groups and befriending these folks on Facebook is that other people are in these Facebook groups sorry, other people are in these Facebook groups who know me and my husband on a personal level. And whenever there is an issue, whether somebody kudos um, our restaurant, or we may have had an issue that a delivery took a really long time, or we, somebody they ordered from us and they were disappointed for whatever reason. And I may not be on Facebook, which I'm not as much really, uh, someone will tag me and I get, someone will tag me, hey, hey, you know, whatever it is. Oh, we know the owners are very nice. They're going to address it. And they tag my name and I get a pop up here on my phone and I go to that Facebook Facebook group and I'm able to immediately address this issue. So one of the main reasons that I am involved in our business community is the support that I'm able to give and receive from our business community that they have are back. And in this day and age, that is very, very important. You want to have a group of people who are business owners who have your back. Sooner or later, you're going to need that. And again, and you can also be the one who provides the support. Another reason that we're part of uh, multiple business groups, and I'm asking you to join a few, is possible partnerships. We um, have a local business that is not a competitor to us, The name of the business is Color Clay. They do have pottery classes for little kids. Um, Attending these uh, pottery things is not cheap. And why does that matter? That matters is that families who go there with young kids who are our demographics have money to go and spend on something that's not a necessity per se. It's something that they do for fun. And we want to attract those customers. And she herself, who's the owner of Color Clay, she's interested in our customers, right? We share the same demographic. We're not direct competitors. We're no competitors anyways, actually. We're food and they're some sort of entertainment. So we've been able to partner with them multiple times and create events. We call it like pizza and pottery event where kids come out and we know we charge like $25 to $30 per child and are able to give this whole experience. The kids get to create a piece of uh, pottery that they get to take home as well as build their own pizza. We have our BYOP nights. So those partnerships are critical. And it is, how are you going to build those partnerships is attending these business um, networking groups and getting to meet people and think about how can I partner with this person? How can I partner with this realtor um, locally? Fantastic. You know, this realtor, whenever they close a deal, probably would like to give a gift card or a thank you card if there is a gift card from my restaurant in there that this realtor can build up and say, hey, thank you so much for your business. I wanted to also invite you to check out this pizzeria or this burger joint. I know the owners personally. They have fantastic food. You know, since you all are new to the area, I mean, if they're buying a new house in the new town or whatever. So that's a fantastic way of building relationships with your local realtors. And no better place to find these folks at than at these networking groups that I'm telling you. Friendship. I don't know about you, but you know, the first few years when we started the restaurant, we were pretty much stuck at the restaurant all the time, as in 70, 80 hours. Then beyond that, you actually need to have a life, clean your home sometimes, meet your kids and hang out. And you don't have as much time for friendship. And we were new, we moved to the state and we opened a restaurant. We had no friends. So the first friends I found was in our local Uh, business gatherings and network groups. And it's a great place to build some friendships because you do have some great things in common, which is you both are business owners. You go through similar challenges. Um, As seasons go up, seasons go down, you know, we deal with similar issues. It's a great place to find a few people that you can have coffee with, aside from partnerships, to also build friendship. That's something you want to 
remember catering sales now that does matter right because we want to grow our sales and one of the things that happens is that you we're obsessed with making sure we are focused on catering. I know about you, but you have got to have a catering menu where you're feeding masses, which is way more profitable than finding 10 customers or finding one customer that orders 10 things. You know, you always want to go for that bulk order. So catering sales, as I mentioned previously in a previous photo, you have like the branch manager of your local bank present that you're building relationships with because you're one restaurant in town that shows their face. You're there, you're making the time. Whenever they want to order catering to feed their crew, they're going to be thinking about you. If they're on their mind and on site because you're there physically, they're going to order from you uh, versus somewhere else. And that is critical. So uh, we love, we've grown our catering tremendously through these relationships that we've been able to build and continuously cultivate. Catering sales, big deal. Another one is mastering your elevator pitch. When I initially, and one of the things that happens, you will get the rhythm is at a lot of these uh, networking groups, you have like 60 seconds to get up, introduce yourself, what your business is about, what is the unique thing about your business, your restaurant, for instance, in my case, and what's a good referral for you. And you have to be able to summarize that in 60 seconds and sometimes 45 seconds, depending on the size of the group, they time it, the somebody, the alarm on the phone goes off, you can't just go on talking. And you need to be able to communicate who you are, what you do in a concise manner. Initially, it's very hard for you to get up in front of 50 people and talk about your restaurant in a short amount of time. And it's such a great practice to get do that weekly. And I did that weekly for like two years. Now I get like, I can get up in front of a, a crowd um, of it doesn't matter what size it is, 150 in front of luncheons. I can get up in, in 30 to 45 seconds, be very concise. This is who I am. This is where our business is. This is what we do. This is what we're famous for. And a great referral for us this week, if this and this and this, and this is how you get in touch with us. Um, it is critical to, that's a skill to be able to, to acquire and you get to practice that um, attending network meetings. So remember that. Uh, the other one that I wanted to talk about is uh, about um, to find opportunities to serve and build goodwill. So goodwill, build goodwill. So here's what this is about. When you're out there, so for instance, yesterday I attended our local Chamber of Commerce luncheon. So as part of the luncheon, there was a couple who got up. They have, they have a nonprofit local here. They call them Battle Buddies. Battle Buddy is, is a nonprofit locally here. They started from a church. And what they do is they train up service dogs and from breeding to all the way connecting them to a veteran who's got PTSD and has, I'm not going into that, but a Battle Buddy or a service dog would be tremendous of tremendous help. So this is what they do. They need $2,500 uh, per dog per year, something like that. So I heard that story. It is great for me to be thinking about, hey, we can host a fundraiser for these folks, which is always a win, 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 because it's a win for them because we're able to raise money for them and awareness. It's a win for our customers to get an idea of, oh, wow, there's this nonprofit that they can get involved. They can feel great about that they're able to contribute to. And it's always a win for us because we're able to be in this, in the middle of helping another charity, building goodwill in our community and build our brand because we want the community to know that we care about this community. We care about our veterans. We live in an area where um, this is a very big deal and we want to honor our veterans anyway. So finding opportunities to serve, they're not going to fall on your lap. You need to get involved. You need to hear about it. You need to initiate contact. You need to cultivate relationships and so goodwill. And that is just so critical uh, for you to be an offense as a business owner, as a restaurant owner out there, uh, finding opportunities to build relationships that could lead to future caterings or sales. And if not, again, fundraiser opportunities and all around uh, good at first. All right. Sorry. What happened to the computer? Okay. So the last one that I mentioned here is that they may meet at your restaurant. So, uh, again, a lot of these networking groups, they need to meet somewhere. 
Um, they can meet at your restaurant partly because it's at 8 a.m., 8.30 a.m., usually when the meeting is. And I don't know about your restaurant. We don't serve breakfast. So as a restaurant is open and available, it's a free space. And if you have 30 uh, people who gather at this meeting, they're every week going to invite other people. They're going to be like, hey, we're meeting at this restaurant. Where's the name? Who, you know, you're going to get exposure. You must always put your name down for free exposure and get people in your restaurant. So they get in the habit of coming to your restaurant. A lot of them, the meeting goes like eight to 10 or so. Our lunch is at 11. We have a lunch buffet. Many of them stick around after the meeting and have their one-on-one meetings and things like that. And they stay and pay for lunch and stay later. So the opportunity to have them to meet at your restaurant is also a great opportunity. Lunch sales, I already mentioned it. So a lot of times they want to do meetings one-on-one and they're going to meet at your restaurant for lunches. So uh, that is another fantastic thing for you to consider. Uh, Let's see. Oh, the other one I wanted to say is, uh, oops, I'm sorry, to see other people. Lunch sales and seeing other people is another one that I want to tell you. What do I mean by that? So like yesterday, um, as I mentioned, I attended this, um, our local chamber of commerce. I had, n- uh, ch- um, I'm sorry, luncheon. I had not attended that for a while, partly because we had a baby and we opened a second restaurant and I was just super busy. Now, why does that matter is that being in a room with other people is actually nice because we deal with so many staff issues you guys may not you may you may not have the issues we have you know we have oven issues customer issues staff issues this one did not come in this one did not show up this one's doing this they're changing their availability because this happened they're moving and sometimes just seeing other people is nice you know what i'm saying just it it's good to see other people i mean it's something for you to consider um i don't know if it makes sense what i'm saying but honestly it is important to make the effort to see other people The last thing I wanted to say about this is for future sake. What do I mean uh, for future sake is you never know what you're going to need in the future. So you need to prepare for what you don't know now. So if you're uh, building a relationship with your local bankers, when you don't need a loan, when you need a loan, you've already established those relationships. And there is a lot of politics involved. It's just a fact, okay? Politics is very important, and it is important for you and I to build relationships um, locally when we don't need to have those relationships. So when we need those relationships, we've already built them. So you're going to have the mayor, the city council folks, always attend your local Chamber of Commerce luncheons, and it's a great opportunity to get to know them. So very important for future sake, because you never know what the future holds. So all of that sounds fantastic. Talked about 10 different benefits, why you should be attending local um, business networking meetings in your town as restaurant owners. Now what's next? Okay, fantastic. That sounds great. Where am I going to start? Let's get to it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to search for your local chamber of commerce online, name of your town. San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, Austin Chamber of Commerce, wherever you're at. You know what I mean? I'm just, you know, this is kind of where we are at. You search for your local Chamber of Commerce. Then what you want to do is look in their uh, events. They're always going to have an events, calendar of events section. You want to look through the calendar and see when they are going to have uh, an upcoming luncheon that's coming up. Here I'm sending telling you that, you know what, set a day and time on your phone to stop by with your food. We always take pizza. So go and meet and shake some hands. So where is your local chamber of commerce? Set a a time on your phone today. I don't know. You're watching this video. What's the point of watching it if you're not going to put it into practice? Because otherwise it's wasting time. Um, Or if you're listening to this podcast, you need to put it into practice either today or tomorrow. Go to your local chamber of commerce, take some food, it could be dessert. It could be a, an entree. It could be an appetizer. It doesn't matter. Go and just introduce yourself. Hey, this is so-and-so. We're a so-and-so restaurant over here. I want to just meet you guys. I want to learn a little about what you guys do and what are you all up to? What's an upcoming luncheon that's coming up that I could be involved in? So set a reminder, day and time on your phone, make it happen. Meet and greet, introduce yourself, ask lots of questions, take your business card so you can drop it off. 
You want to look for the monthly events, as I mentioned, yearly events, and what opportunities are out there for you. So we um, initially, the first year, we attended all of the luncheons there was. And from the second year and since then, for the last four years, we've been one luncheon per month. We've been serving lunch. And it's at our local civic center. We cater the lunch. That lunch tends to be about $2,000 for that catered lunch. So that's a great opportunity for you to get your name out there, get your food in people's mouths and catering. You know that we need to be obsessed with catering. Another opportunity is, for instance, our local chamber of commerce, something's going on, which is an event they host in March. It's called The Taste. And they're going to set up 40 to 50 different restaurants. People have to pay $25 to come in and they get unlimited food. It's a great opportunity for us to be present, hand out our flyer, get people to eat our food, build relationships and cultivate our old relationships. You're going to have a lot of people, hey, you know, the, hey, Matangas, for instance, our restaurant, right? They get to, oh, like, we love your restaurant. We can shake their hands, get thank you so much and blah, blah, blah. Here's some free food, what have you. Big deal. This is important to us. Look for opportunities your restaurant can be present. You'd be surprised how not many restaurant owners are active in these networking gatherings and chamber of commerce. You have fantastic opportunity. Upcoming luncheon next month, sign up. Pay for it. It's usually like $18, $20. Get on, go have some lunch, meet some people, take business cards. Uh, that's for your chamber of commerce. You can always go to also meetup.com. Right now, well, after this video, if you're watching the video or if you're listening to the podcast, simultaneously pull up your browser, go to meetup.com, uh, look for the name of your town and what business networking groups are meeting in your local town that you can, they're not currently wherever restaurant they're meeting at, which is usually what it is, go attend. It's free to show up the first time. You can later find out if there are any requirements for you to join as a member. In the meantime, just go for the first time this next week. Make some contact. Master your elevator pitch. 60 seconds. Hey, this is Soso Restaurant. We're located at this location. We've been in business for this long. We're famous for our this. And a great referral for us this week, as I'm hammering the, the catering, right? We're looking for any gathering, a business, uh, I'm sorry, birthday parties that you know of, any business gathering, luncheons, or anything you can think of that we can serve catering. We have a catering menu. We'll be happy to work with your budget, blah, 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 blah. Come up with a, an elevator pitch for your restaurant. Very critical. Uh, last but not least, let's see what we have left, is follow up with and meet up with folks one-on-one. -on -one. It is important that beyond that, you collect business cards. You collected 20 business cards then you need to contact each one of them. You can email them, you can text them. Hey, do you want to meet for a cup of coffee? They can meet at your restaurant. You invite them to come to your restaurant to just for a drink. It could be a soda. It doesn't matter at odd hours at 2 p.m., at 3 p.m. or whatever that you can meet with them. 30 minutes, get to know them, have them know you, share with you what's working for you, what partnership, how can I serve you, partner with you, realtor, mortgage brokers, insurance folks it doesn't matter find a way auto shop dealerships how can you partner with them i mean as restaurant owners it is so easy for us everybody eats food people you know what i'm saying that should not be too difficult for us to find somebody who wants to eat food i, I hope that makes sense all right so i hope that this was helpful to you um again in this show i share with you Things that you already know, Facebook ads, you need to do digital marketing, which I am all for. I also talk about offline marketing because you cannot uh, put that aside. There is great opportunity for you to uh, take advantage of that. And as I went over here in the beginning, there are 10 benefits, not just growing your sales to you being involved in your local business community. I hope that this episode was helpful to you. If you're listening on the podcast, I have the link for the YouTube. Come on over, leave a comment, at, got questions, let us know. Uh, you can uh, leave your uh, questions if you wanted to um, leave it anywhere on, sorry, leave it anywhere on under a YouTube video and or come to our website, makingdoshow.com. Scroll down. There's a section where you can submit questions. We're going to have Q&A episodes that I love to cover your questions and figure out what you're up to. 
So let me know if you sowed that seed, if you took action, because otherwise, what's the point, right? Subscribe to the show. Say hello. You can always send us an email to makingdoshow at gmail.com. I appreciate your time. Now let's get back to making some dough. Have a great week, and I see you right here next week at Making Dough Show. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.